Where were you when war started in 1939? That was September of the year that I left school there. And I was at the university for three years and went straight into the Navy. Don't laugh, but I worked in naval intelligence. Five graduates were chosen by Lieutenant Moriarty, who came to our college, St. Sophia, and asked, would we go to do some secret work in the Navy? We came down to Hartman, and there was a gentleman from MI5 came from London to instruct us, and he said we would never to explain our work to a living soul, otherwise we'd be shot. And I remember him saying in his English voice, rather messy, but still, I've shot so many. <laughs> and as far as I know, that work has never been described. You know, on TV they explain about the enigma code they got from the Germans. Never has anybody described the work we did. But roughly, I can tell you, it was a method of identifying ships, airplanes, submarines from the way they sent their Morse code. You know, we could recognise somebody sending a message by Morse code and we'd say, that's that sub, near side gone. We got to know them, measure them and photograph their dots and dashes on a primitive TV screen. I think that's about all I can tell you. I was in charge of this, this group, and we worked in a little ship with soldiers marching around for our security. I remember seeing bayonets pass by the window, and we had to have a password to get through the gate towards this little hut. But it was a great time. We had a lot of fun. We didn't get paid much, <laughs> yeah. but we did. We had a lot of fun. The attack on Sydney Harbour by Japanese submarines last May was a complete flop. Do you remember Sydney being attacked? Yes, I was on weekend leave at home when I heard the siren and we were at Rosefort so we couldn't hear anything but we filled the bath with water and we, well of course when I got back to Harbour my section were busily identifying those midget subs they only sent messages to the mother sub at midnight each day. Mm. We used to sit there like vultures <laughs> waiting for their messages. Australian women served in all services. 3,000 in the Navy, 35,000 in the Army, 27,000 in the Air Force. Many thousands toiled at unfamiliar tasks to release others for the fighting services. In every home, in every part of Australia, a sacrifice had been made to uphold the tradition of Anzac. What was, what was Bobby like as a child? Wonderful. He was my hero. Our parents used to say they never worried about me so long as Bobby was with me. My goodness, if they'd seen rocks we climbed at Coochie and 
wild things we did. I think that worried a little bit, but we did them together. And Bob, of course, went to Malaya. He was in Changing Camp for a little while. Then when they had to go to the, the railway, the Burma Railway, and so Bob was one of the ones chosen because he was young and healthy. And that was it, you know. I mean, by the time we heard he was dead, he'd been dead for two years. That was after the war. I was a rush cut babe. I went to my commanding officer and asked for permission to go home. And he said, what's the trouble? And I told him, and he must have run army records because he came back, put his arm on my shoulder and said, the captain's car is at the front to take you home. So I went home in this great naval car with a ribbon mm -hmm. flying at the front. And a naval driver who said, bad news, love. And I said, I have no idea. But they wouldn't give the telegram to my mother. And he said, bad news. <laughs> it's at the same time they were sending out names of people who'd been released, you see. So people didn't know which it was when the telegram came, but when they wouldn't give it to Mum, we thought, well, you know. Oh, dreadful times. Mm -hmm. Terrible times. We were just one, weren't we? And there are others as well. Well, Bob's whole company died. So we had nobody who was working close to him to give us any yes. little details. Mm. Mm, that was a war. Yep. We don't want another one. No, we did. After the war, what did you do in the I had three babies in quick succession <laughs> and Aubrey had been a court reporter before the war. He applied for Hansard work in Canberra. So we moved to Canberra. And you've that, been ever since. <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> and uh, your daughter's played a significant role in Canberra's history. What, what was that? That was Rosemary you're talking about. She was the first woman in Australia to head a government. When ACT government came into being, she was voted into the job of Chief Minister. And we were a fairly conservative family. We could never work out how we managed to raise such a radical daughter. <laughs> she used to have great debates with her father. From quite an early age, she always had a talent for speaking very well, which she still has, doesn't she? Where did she get that from? I don't know. <laughs> no idea. From her mama. Thank you.